Hello and welcome to the Punchline Mailbag Edition for the end of 2014. I'm your comic strip critic and let's not waste any time. These are the questions that you had for me. When are you doing the Garfield movie part 2? I got asked this question a lot after the release of the Garfield movie part 1, and I am working on part 2 right now. I'm actually hoping a couple things might line up. So we'll see what happens, but I am working on it. That is the next big review that's coming. What equipment do you use for your show and how much does it all cost? Well, the cost all varies because some of the equipment's a little older than it is when I got it back then. So the costs, you know, might vary a little bit. You might be able to find it for cheaper than I did, so I actually won't say that. But what I use right now are Canon T3i, is what I used to use when I uh, filmed the show back in my room. What I'm using right now is a Canon Vixia R500, I believe. I'm using uh, this lavalier mic, which is by uh, Movo, or Movo, M-O-V-O. And for my software, I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, uh, After Effects CS6, CS6, and occasionally Photoshop CS6 as well. I used to use the Final Cut Suite, but I uh, left that behind and upgraded because Final Cut version 7 was starting to show its age, and I'm a professional uh, video editor by trade, so I, you know, just upgraded for work and took the punchline along for the ride with me. So that's what I use when I make the show. Is there any storyline or a character direction you would have liked to have seen explored in Calvin and Hobbes while it was running, but sadly wasn't? Actually, something that I would have liked to have seen was more interaction between Calvin and Susie that... Mm, that wasn't directly uh, antagonistic between the two of them. Something where they were just like, just talking, maybe mulling over something that they were confused about together, maybe the way the world worked or how adults thought or something like that, where they found more common ground than they usually do. I thought that, I think that would have been kind of interesting to see, but it never happened and you know, that's what Bill Watterson wanted. Never saw it come to fruition. Oh well. Why isn't Jerk City on the top of 2014 list? Because of ground rule number one for every year I will ever do the punchline. Any comic strip that makes it into the top of that year has to have been a comic that I reviewed. I did not review Jerk City in 2014, therefore it wasn't eligible. Also, I haven't read Jerk City, so I never even knew it was a possibility, but now it's on my to-do list and I will read it this year. What do you think of Local Patrol? Or for better or for worse? Or Mother Goose and Grimm? Or Mutts? Or the Mr. Potato Head comic by Jim Davis? What about some of the Disney comics? What do you think about a Grumpy Cat comic? You should give Looking for Group a look. I will get there eventually. You guys have great ideas. I love that you recommend so much stuff to me. I am one man. I already have a dozen episodes planned before all those suggestions, so I will get around to them at some point. Eventually, I can't say when. What's your favorite Christmas comic? My favorite Christmas comic is a Calvin and Hobbes Christmas Eve comic that ran in the Sunday papers. I forget exactly from what year it was, but it was from uh, The Indispensable Calvin and Hobbes, where it's a uh, fairly lengthy, elegant poem about Calvin just sort of relaxing and being content with the Christmas season, always sleeping next to the fire, uh, content just lying next to Hobbes. And, and the final lines were, tomorrow's what I'm waiting for, but I can wait a little more. Beautiful, simple, just one big panel uh, with some great artwork looking through a, a window frame. Just some, some great artwork on Bill Watterson's part and, and great writing too, I love that one. What programs do you use to edit your videos? Like I said, I used to use Final Cut, but nowadays I use Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects with occasionally a little bit of Photoshop. And sometimes I might use something like DVD Studio Pro or a compressor depending on where I'm sending videos for my other work. but. Typically these days, it's pretty much all done in Premiere or After Effects. Who would win in a fight? Spaceman Spiff or Stupendous Man? The superhero versus the science person. Hmm. So it's Thor versus Iron Man, basically, is what you're asking me. I don't know. I'm going to go Stupendous Man because, you know, superheroes fly and they're invulnerable. So, Stupendous Man. Also, Spiff crashes his spaceship all the time, which puts him at a major disadvantage now that I think about it. It's obvious you don't like the Garfield comics, and you didn't like what you saw in the movie to be any better. So the movie doesn't seem to be a decent way to spark interest in people looking to maybe get into the comic. So who are the Garfield movies meant for if they're not targeting to any of those audiences? They're targeting box office numbers, I think. Uh, 
I'm not really sure what who the film's meant for. I presume it's meant for kids because it's a very kid-friendly film. Lots of bright colors, simple dialogue, simple characters. Garfield, the cartoon cat, running around doing cartoony things. Especially in part two, which we'll get to. So, I have to presume it's meant for kids, but... I just think there's still better kid stuff out there. We'll take a detailed look in the future. What was your favorite comic as a child? Easy answer, Calvin and Hobbes, of course, with Foxtrot actually coming in at number two. In total, how many comic strip writers and illustrators have you met in person? Of course, you would ask me this question the year after I went to the Rubin Awards, when they got so huge that it's too big for me to remember. And I hate to say that because it sounds like bragging, and I really don't like being the bragging, arrogant sort of type, but it is just too big for me to remember. Fortunately, I still have the attendance list saved, so we're just going to take a look at that real quick. Brian, Brad Anderson of Marmaduke, Isabella Bannerman of Six Chicks, Sandra Bell Lundy of Between Friends, Brian Boychuk of The Chuckle Brothers, Hector Cantu of Baldo, Brian Bassett of Red and Rover, Bunny Hoist Carpenter of The Lockhorns, Dave Coverley of Speed Bump, Tom Gamble of The Doozies, Brian Crane of Pickles, Greg Evans of Luann, Jason Chatfield of Ginger Megs, Rob Harrell of Adam at Home, Scott Hilburn of The Argyle Sweater, Bill Holbrook of On the Fast Track, Lynn Johnston of For Better or For Worse, Jeff Keen of Family Circus, Kathy Guyswhite of Kathy, John Hambrock, who does The Brilliant Mind of Edison Lee, Patty Hart and Mason Mastroianni, part of the crew who take care of BC and The Wizard of Id, Bill Hines of Tank McNamara, among others, Jim Horwitz of Watson, Rick Kirkman, Jerry Scott, and Jim Borgman, who I've all met before, who do Baby Blues and Zits, Jeff Mallett of Fraz, Wiley Miller of Non Sequitur, Ryan Pagolo of Bunny, Mark Parisi of Off the Mark, Mel Lazarus of Mama, Terry Liebenson, of course, of The Pajama Diaries, Patrick McDonald of Mutts, Jeff Parker of Mother Goose and Grimm, Stefan Pastis of Pearls Before Swine, Dan Pararo of Bizarro, who actually also hosted a reality show this year, uh, Utopia, Hilary Price of Rhymes with Orange, Maria Scriven, who does Half Full, Eddie Pittman of the webcomic Red's Planet, Tom Richmond, one of the head illustrators and editors at Mad Magazine, Mark Tutuli of Leo and Heart of the City, Brian and Greg Walker of Beetle Bailey, and Dave Wammond of Reality Check. I am also in contact with some people uh, who I haven't met yet, but I've been in touch with them on social media. People such as Bill Amend, Gavin Unfan, and of course, two I really still need to meet, Norm Fiuti and Dana Simpson. If you could have one movie adapted into a comic strip, what would it be and why? Good question. I would say either Star Wars or the Star Trek universe, just for the sheer wealth of material that can be used. Doctor Who for that same regard. But here's the thing. Those have already all been made into comic strips, so I've been beaten to the punch. Do you ever plan to do an episode on comics found in The New Yorker or other magazines? That would be interesting, but I would have to make sure to categorize the comics by the cartoonist who does them, because that's really what I think would be more interesting to, uh, to look at as a cartoonist's overall style. Actually, now that I think about it, my grandparents actually have a... Like about like six inch book that's about that's about this big it's massive and weighs about half a ton of new yorker cartoons from the 1920s all the way up until the 80s or 90s i've got to see if they still have it that would be interesting to look at have you seen the documentary stripped if so what do you think of it i have seen stripped i bought it the day it was released and i saw the whole thing i have it on my iphone um it's great. I think it's it's a great look, and it takes a look at something that I think is really interesting and really important, which is the transition um, from from print media and newspapers to digital media, moving into a world where web comics are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, that's a very fascinating and interesting and important thing to look at in uh, in the short form comic scene. I think so. I was really glad that strip took the time to to really sort of look at that issue and explore it and. And uh, not, not give a definitive answer on it, and it wasn't all you know doom and gloom for from newspaper comics, but it was uh, very cool to see. Plus, a lot of great interviews. I'm still curious just how the directors managed to get Bill Watterson to do an interview. I don't I don't know what you guys did, but uh, 
Congratulations. What is your idea for an awesome comic strip crossover? Flash Gordon versus Cthulhu. I want a horror comic. If Calvin and Hobbes were ever to be made into a movie, what do you think the plot should be? Good question, actually. That's a really good question. Um, you would have to incorporate a lot of Calvin's alter egos, like Spaceman Spiff and Tracer Bullet and Stupendous Man, and have them make sense. It could be Calvin possibly trying to avoid the first day of school. Uh, and then surviving the first day of school, or maybe the lead up to Christmas as he's trying to be good for Christmas and, and he's tempted to do naughty things and he's trying to keep up the naughty list. Actually, I like that second idea a lot. Like, set it in December and then have all sorts of various things going on that tempt Calvin's alter egos into making him do evil things so that he gets put on the naughty list and have it end on, on Christmas morning or day after Christmas. Um, with him like getting all his presents and him like maybe talking to Santa or imagining what Santa's doing. There's actually a lot of interesting ideas you could do with that. So that I guess could be the Calvin and Hobbes Christmas special. What are some of your favorite bands? Actually my favorite band right now is Avenged Sevenfold. Um, I may not look like it and I don't play a lot of heavy metal music on the punchline, but that's because there's a certain attitude towards it that I think is a bit too aggressive for the kind of show I run. But I tend to prefer hard rock or heavy rock. Uh, things with guitar solos, I'm a big fan of guitar solos. Um, a lot of 80s metal I like, Iron Maiden, Metallica, uh, Aerosmith I was a big fan of for a little while back in high school. Um, and these days I, I actually tend to perform more instrumental stuff. I'm a big fan of OC Remix, which is where I get a lot of the credits music I use on the show. Um, they have some really, really good stuff that's a lot of instrumental stuff. Some some stuff with vocals too, but uh, I don't know why. I just seem to tend to prefer music without lyrics these days. I think just so I can have it on without focusing on it. If, if someone's trying to sing, then I try to listen to the lyrics a lot, and I tend to get distracted from what I'm doing if there are lyrics going on. So yeah, OC Remix. Love it. Check it out if you haven't. It's free. Since you've never officially done it, could you list your top 10 favorite comic strips of all time? It's tough. Because um, my top favorite comics are kind of always shifting around. Some kind of fade out of uh, favor. Not because they're bad, but just because I've read them a lot. I'm discovering new ones because of the punchline all the time. So uh, new ones get added in a lot. But my top 10 comics. And we're talking newspaper comics here. Not web comics. That's, that is way too much to try and read for web comics. But top 10 favorite newspaper comics are Calvin and Hobbes. Foxtrot, Retail, Heavenly Nostrils, The Far Side, Pearls Before Swine, Zitz, Leo, and Sally Fork, which I know I haven't talked about much. And I should mention that that's not a straight best to, to least best order. It's not my favorite, then my next favorite, then my next favorite. It's just 10 in random order that I just happen to like. What are your thoughts on the new Star Wars teaser? Interesting. There's a Stormtrooper who's a black guy, there's some chick riding something that looks like a fudgesicle. The lightsaber thing is interesting, but it doesn't bother me. The, the thing with the cross guard, I know a whole lot of people got upset about it. Let's just wait and see what the actual movie is. It's too soon for me to really have an opinion on it because there's nothing going on about the plot at all. We're not told anything about what the plot of Star Wars is, so I really can't say much about it, you know. I can say that you know Terminator Genesis is kind of interesting because the plot looks like an interesting twist in the Terminator movie. That looks interesting, but I know nothing about what's going to happen in Star Wars Episode 7, so it's too soon for me to really tell. Regarding that clip from atop the fourth wall in the Garfield movie review, did you actually cross over with Linkara or was that just a noodle incident? First off, congratulations for using a great Calvin and Hobbes reference in the question, and I just asked Linkara for permission to use a little video clip of his. He did not actually film anything for me, and he's very generous in that regard. He's done that for me a couple times. If you need something from him and you just ask him, I think pretty much 100% of the time he'll say yes and let you use some of his footage. Great guy. Did you have a shave at some point during the year? Yes, I did, although it's been a couple of days since my last shave now. Um, I was actually at a commission for a little while uh, in like the August to September area because I actually had surgery on part of my face. and. Uh, everything's fine, nothing to worry about, nothing critical, but I did shave this all off so it was cleaner during that time. And I just sort of kept it clean shaven ever since. I'm surprised some of you noticed. 
What movie, cartoon, or TV show would you like to be adapted into a comic strip? I've already answered the movie question, so let's take it over to the world of TV. Uh, I would actually really like to see a comic, or, or preferably actually a web comic, because there's more space to work with, uh, set in the world of Avatar. I think it would be interesting to continue the adventures of Aang or Korra or a new Avatar now that the series is over. And, you know, they could have a lot of fun and a lot, lot more freedom outside of the 22-minute uh, the restriction that TV gives them with that. That would be, I think, a lot of fun to see because that's a great world and a great setting that they've set up there. So I would like to go back to it at some point. What are your opinions on political cartoons? Often very smart, often very opinionated, often ignorant of what the other side thinks. I'm just not a fan of political cartoons because I'm not really a fan of politics and mudslinging in general, so I appreciate them, I respect them, you know, I understand what they do, and I can look at them objectively, and, you know, I did back in the election of the 2012 video, but just on their own merits, I'm typically not a fan of political cartoons in general. Are there any comic strips that you would like to see an animated special or even a movie of, like the Peanuts animations? The retail Thanksgiving slash Black Friday special. You could have so much fun and so many different things going on with this. In my mind, it would start off as a regular let's give thanks for what we have sort of holiday special. And then it would transition into the madness of Black Friday while you're working at a retail store. And you could do so much with that, looking at it from the worker's perspectives, the managerial perspective, from the perspective of the consumers going out and buying things in the holiday rush. You could have all sorts of social commentary going on about what Black Friday means and what we want it to mean, what we want to get rid of it, or all sorts of different ideas. And of course, I just want to give more love to Norm Fiuti's work whenever I possibly can. Are there any storylines that you don't like from the comic strips that you do enjoy? Good question. Um, there was Pretty early on in Foxtrot's run, actually, a storyline in which Andrea thought that Roger was cheating on her. And it was kind of like a really dark and serious and depressing storyline, at least when I thought, when I first discovered it at the age of about 11 or 12, somewhere in there, for a comic that was usually very lighthearted and, and, and fun. It just seemed really out of place to me, and it never quite sat right with me. So that, that's one that I never really liked all that much, to be honest. Sorry, Bill. How long each day does it take you to read all the comics you read? And how many hours of comics do you read before doing a review? Usually it takes me about 10 minutes to read all the comics that I have subscribed to. Sometimes a little more if I'm appreciating a particularly piece of good artwork. Um, and I usually read about three to four months worth of comics. Uh, before I sit down and start scripting a review for it, because I want to get a sense for uh, the comic over a length of time. Um, or if it's a storyline, then I'll just read the whole storyline, which can sometimes be one week or two weeks or several months in something like Flash Gordon. Um, so it depends in part on what I'm reviewing, uh, but usually about three, four, five months. Who would you say is the worst Mary Sue in the comics industry? For those who um, aren't aware of the term, a Mary Sue is a character who is practically perfect in every way and things just happen to go their way all the time. Um, and that's really a difficult one to answer because I really can't think of anyone who's pretty much like that. Um, with the rare and not really Mary Sue-ish but very bizarre interesting case study of Les Moore from Funky Winker Bean. Um, the folks over at Comics Alliance do a monthly uh, recap on Funky Winker Bean, and they explain it much better than I ever could. Um, but somehow Les is always, like, perfectly miserable. Um, it's, it's weird, it's bizarre, things, he doesn't get things that go his way, but he's just so, like, oddly satisfied in his misery that it's... It's, it's really interesting and... and psychologically, I guess, fascinating to kind of read and try and understand. It's not a perfect example, but he's the most interesting case I can sort of think of that's close to a Mary Sue. He's like a twist on a Mary Sue, I guess. Do you have a favorite Garfield strip, excluding the Halloween special where he's alone? 
I can't say I have another favorite one, but the other one that's kind of interesting and worth mentioning because it's one of the few things that actually happens in the Garfield comic is when John and Liz finally, finally, finally get together and uh, start a romantic relationship after years and, and decades of John trying. Um, you know, it was the conclusion to that one particular chapter of the Garfield comic and John Arbuckle's life, and then we move on to something that's a little different. The status quo has officially been changed, which was, is always interesting in comics, because uh, as long-lasting as they are, the longer lasting the comic is, the less its status quo will will change, because the status quo gets locked in and then gets very hard to change. Um, well, there are some good examples I can think of in regards to that. Blondie started off actually as like a counterculture sort of girl. Um, she used to be a 1920s flapper who disobeyed her daddy's orders to marry Dadwood. And nowadays, it's you, you could never guess that. There's basically no status changes. Nothing ever happens. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the one interesting thing that happened in Garfield besides the Halloween storyline. Has a comic strip ever crossed the line and offended you so much that you refuse to ever read it again? I hate to rag on it so much. I really do, because I know that there are people out there who enjoy it. Um, both ironically and legitimately enjoy it. Um, but after I did that video uh, a couple years back on Funky Winker Bean, I, I, I couldn't read the strip anymore. Um, every once in a while, I would pick it up and read it in the newspaper because... Um, usually I read my comics online on Go Comics or Comics Kingdom, uh, but every once in a while I'll pick up my, my, my you know, my made from paper newspaper and I'll read the comic section. And, you know, usually the ones that I like, I like, and usually the ones that I aren't, that I'm not subscribed to online, I just don't like as much. Um, and usually Funky Winker Bean, I just don't like it all, so. Yeah, like others I'll tolerate with and I'll be curious and I'll say, oh, I wonder what's going on in this one. I, uh, I should really check them out sometime. But usually I read Funky Wink Me and I just say, oh, right, that happened and I just would rather not read it. What TV shows and movies based on strips do you like? I have to admit, I haven't really seen that many of them. I know that the Dick Tracy movie and the Flash Gordon movie and the Flash Gordon TV show from, I think, 2007 are out there and they exist. But I actually haven't seen them and I'm not going to see them until it's time for me to review them because I want to go into them pretty much blind. So I know that there's a Flash Gordon movie. I know it's a it's a geek cult classic. I know pretty much nothing about the storyline or the plot or the actors at all, aside from Gordon's alive. But that's the only thing I know about it. And I'd rather, please you know, don't spoil me. I'd rather just go into it completely blind with no opinion the first time I see it. So I'll tell you about it eventually though. Uh, there are plans to eventually review those. Have you ever been to the Billy Ireland Cartoon Museum in Columbus, Ohio? I have not, and I should. I actually have met the uh, curator Jenny Robb uh, at last year's Rubin Awards, wonderful lady, and I'm sure that the museum is will be so much fun for, for me to go to. I should have gone last year when there was a uh, Calvin and Hobbes and Colbusac dual exhibit going on, but I got caught up with a lot of work and you know, family and things happened, and the surgery I mentioned earlier, and I wound up not being able to go, which was really sad. But, um, you know, I still like to go at some point, so Jenny, if by chance you're watching, uh, let's set something up. Let's meet together at some point. What is your favorite storyline from Calvin and Hobbes, or just from comics overall? Good question. Uh, from Calvin and Hobbes, I think I am going to go with either the Attack of the Deranged Mutant Killer Monster Snow Goons, just because it's a lot of silly, entertaining fun. Or there was a storyline where Calvin wanted to not do his homework, and so he got involved in a big time-traveling mess in which he met his future self and his past self, and Hobbs also got to meet his future self, and there was all sorts of wibbly-wobbly, timey-whiny Doctor Who shenanigans sort of going on. It was actually really smart and really clever and really complex for a medium as as slow burning as, as the comics pages are. Um, super smart. I love that one a lot. What are the plush toys that we can see on your cabinet in the videos? Oh, you mean those guys. Um, I actually redid my room. They got put in a box and are down in the basement of my house somewhere. Uh, but they were actually not 
based all on uh, comic strip characters. Uh, they were graduation gifts and other assorted uh, milestone gifts. Um, yeah, uh, I actually do have have some uh, comic strip based plushies now though. I have my signed Larry the Croc from Pearls Before Swine. I have my uh, Hobbs, which was given to me by a fan. Thank you, Katie. Um, and I also have a uh, Charlie Brown plushie, which I found uh, in a secondhand buy store somewhere, and a little like dog Burt plush, which I slammed down, and he, and he says a phrase from, I'm pretty sure, the UPN Dilbert show. So those are the four that I have right now, and you know, I actually don't have a Stoopy one. I should get a Stoopy one at some point. So I'm, I'm always looking to expand. So they might make an appearance in a review at some point. Who knows? Besides Dick Tracy and Ginger Megs, are there any other zombie strips you actually like or at least find tolerable? I'm actually trying to phase out the term zombie strip and create a distinction between a zombie strip, which are older comics that I don't like, and therefore Dick Tracy and Ginger Megs are not zombie strips, and legacy strips, which are comics that I do like. And in that regard, the one that comes to my mind uh, first and foremost is Sally Fork, which I know I actually haven't talked about much on the punchline, um, but I just think it's a really solid family comic that's not necessarily a sitcom, but it's just a good slice of life comic that uh, I just think is is fun and clever, and I just have a good time reading that one. Um, aside from that, though, I can't think of anything else right now off the top of my head, but we'll probably get into them later at some point. Would you ever review comics from magazines? Maybe? I really don't know what sort of comics those would be. We talked about the New Yorker a little bit earlier, but aside from that, I'm not sure exactly what uh, you would be referring to, uh, commenter, so send me some examples or some suggestions and I'll at least take a look at them. I can't say I'll review them, but I'll give them a glance over. Have you ever thought of reviewing The Wizard of Iz since you have brought it up before? I would probably review The Wizard of Iz, but a whole lot of what I've said about BC uh, can be transferred over to my thoughts on The Wizard of Iz since it's made by the same creative crew. Um, I could do a comic strip doctor on Wizard of Iz too. There's a whole lot of ways to punch that strip up too, so I, I might talk about it at some point, yeah. What comic would make the best transition to cinema that hasn't? That's actually a good question, and not one that I'd actually prefer, because I would prefer for comics to go to the small screen instead. Whether that's TV or original web series, things like uh, Red vs. Blue or VGHS, I would prefer for comics to go to that instead, because uh, in TV, that's a little smaller, a little more bite-sized, and it's more serialized, which I think is more similar to how comics are. Uh, movies are a very sort of one-and-done deal, except for maybe there's a part two with a sequel. But there's a very definite, like, this is the one package and that's all you were gonna get. Which I don't think is really, like, how comics work. But if it's, you know, a multi-season TV show, then you have that same potential to evolve the characters over a long span of time, like you do in comics. Uh, for example, if we were to make a retail movie, and I'm just gonna designate a start and end point, and you were to start it with when Marla is single, and you were to end it when Marla is married and has her child, that I think would be too much to cram into a uh, movie, and it's not what I would want the focus of the movie to be about anyways. But over a TV show, we can take our time and stretch that out over the course of three, four, five, even more years, uh, and give it, I think, the proper length and attention that something like that would deserve. Um, but that being said, which would I like to see go to uh, TV or the internet? Well, like I just said, retail. I would always love to give retail, you know, more publicity because I'm a massive, massive fan of retail. Uh, I think Luann could also work out pretty well. Basically, anything that relies pretty heavily on continuity could work out pretty well. Um, but strips that don't rely on continuity, you could still make it work, but you would have to come up with a concrete storyline for it for to have to have a story there, like Family Circus does not have storylines. Could you make storylines from that? I'm sure you could. They made a couple Dennis the Menace movies, and I haven't seen them in a long while, but it's possible. So yeah, retail, the band. Leo would be kind of interesting to make some uh, some more web animations out of. They made some back in the day, but those were like really short. It would be it would be interesting to see like a day in the life of Leo over the course of an entire episode. I would like to see that. How's that sound? Have you ever killed a man? I'm just curious. Nah. How does he know? How does he know? 
Did you hide the body? What are your picks for the top five most influential comic strips? This is one that I'm, again, a little hesitant to say because I'm not as intimately familiar with the early days of comics as I am with the modern generation of comics, but based on what I have seen and read, I will take my best stab at what I think some of the biggest influences from then to now are. Little Nemo, Crazy Cat, Peanuts, Flash Gordon, and Calvin and Hobbes. Have you ever seen the stop-motion Pogo movie? I have not. And speaking of influential comics, Pogo is another one of those big influential ones, which I really should delve into and explore more and more. I need to get a copy at some point. What voice actors would you personally pick to voice your favorite comic characters? I have to admit, I don't know voice actors really all that well. Not, I'm not saying I haven't met them, but like the stable of voice actors that are popular and versatile in the US is just not something that I keep up to date on. That's not really my scene. But I will just go ahead and say, can we just get the cast from The Legend of Korra and The Last Airbender shows to just voice everything? Because they were great. Like across the board, they were fantastic. Aren't you based in Ohio? There's a new comics expo starting there. Cartoon Crossroads Columbus. Thank you for telling me about the new expo. It's still a little ways off, at least a full year, if not more. I think I'm gonna have to double check. Um, but I would like to go to it when it starts rolling around and getting a little closer. And yes, I do live in Ohio. I'm fairly close to the Cleveland area. So I live the same place that Superman was born. How's that for ya? And the final question. What you think of the Peanuts movie trailer? I was pleasantly surprised by it. Um, it looks and feels and moves a whole lot like the original animated specials, like, you know, the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown or the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Um, I actually heard that they're filming that, so to speak, in computer imagery in 12 frames a second, which is what the animated specials were filmed in, which is actually, I think, a really good move. Um, everything these days is, you know, 48 frames per second or 60 frames per second, which is fine. I have no problem with that for depending on what the project is, you know, for The Hobbit or Pacific Rim or something else like that. Absolutely. 60 frames a second all the way. But for something that already has a distinctive feel and like sense of style ingrained in the public consciousness, like Peanuts, going back to that simple uh, 12 frame a second style, I think was really, really good. Aside from that, though, I really can't say much about it yet um, because, again, the trailers don't really have much in the way of plot revealed to them. Um, I hope the movie's good. I really want it to be good. I really, really want it to be a good movie. Um, not just because it's Charlie Brown, and I hugely respect Charlie Brown, of course, everyone does, but I want, you know, I kind of am hoping, maybe it's a bit of a pipe dream, but if this particular movie based on a comic does well, then maybe some other movie based on a comic will do well. Um, not Calvin and Hobbes, obviously. I would, I'll eat my shoes if Bill Watterson never agrees to a Calvin and Hobbes movie. Um, with something like Retail or Heavenly Nostrils or Luann or Leo would be really interesting. A Leo movie would be really cool. We could get Tim Burton on board for that. I think he would love that. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping the Peanuts movie does well. Um, and I'm hoping that, if, that, that its success will do well, not just for the Charlie Brown empire, uh, for the Peanuts empire, but for comics as a whole. That like somehow other people might want to say, oh yeah, that was a good comic, I should pick up and read Peanuts again. Or I should introduce my kids to Peanuts, to the comics. And from there they say, oh hey, as long as we're reading this comic strip, why don't I also show you this comic strip, or hey, if you like this old comic strip, let's check out this new comic strip. I don't know it much, it's called Heavenly Nostrils. Let's check it out and see if we like it. Something along those lines. Um, so I'm hoping this isn't just a thing where it's just like one thing and then it's done. I'm hoping that, you know, there's like a ripple effect of, of pop culture resurgence uh, coming back from the Peanuts movie. I may be a little optimistic, but that's what I would like to see from the Peanuts movie somehow. Those are all the questions for this year's mailbag. Thank you so much for your questions and sending them in. I had a lot of good questions this year. Um, if you have any more, Punchline Quickies will still be continuing every week along with Question of the Week in those. So you can keep submitting your questions in advance for the mailbag one year from now. 
Uh, I gotta go work on the next review. Until next time, I'm your comic strip critic, and I read the funny pages in search of awesome comics. See ya.